Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NBA slate for tonight, uh, December 28th. And as you guys know, obviously, um, there's going to be probably plenty of news in addition to the news that we already have gotten uh, as of this early time frame. So I encourage everybody to, um, to come to the live before lock show at six o'clock where we go over the news as of then. And also, I obviously encourage everybody to stick around even after lock um, for news that shows up after that. Uh, like last night when uh, Jalen Brunson was ruled out, um, you had to be on top of it. And this is what the NBA is. It's a very, very difficult sport. And you really can't be profitable unless you're willing to make that type of commitment to be, you know, around right up and through almost the last game. So not to say that it's easy, but we're going to try to make it as uh, as manageable as possible. I guess we have to start by who the best plays are as of this time, you know, so let's start. I will go game by game and see if we can identify some possible values here. The, the first thing that kind of shows up for me is that with Phoenix, Washington, you have um, Bradley Beal, who's probably going to be out. Uh, it's, it's back to back, but forget that. He sat out the last five minutes of the game with a hamstring issue. So I'm presuming he's not going to play, but uh, we'll see. Um, if he's out, then all those Washington guys that we thought about before being Gafford, um, um, Porzingis even, Kuzma, they certainly get a bump, but it's certainly not a great matchup. So we have to kind of see who they're in now starting and, 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 and all that stuff. But we'll we'll be on top of that closer to uh, to seven. The one guy who's right now showing up as a very strong play is Rui Hachimura. Um, you know, he's 3,900 and he's showing up as one of the better values on the slate. Um, but again, th this can really change dramatically throughout the course of the day. But for now, uh, let's identify uh, Rui Hachimura as a strong play. Um, Phoenix, we still have uh, Booker out. We have Shaman, who's, I guess, just now questionable. Um, that, that's, I guess, something. Uh, let me see if I like anybody from the Phoenix side here. Um, I'm not really. I'm not really getting to too much at all. I mean, eight and at seventy four hundred, I guess looks, I guess looks reasonable. But even Chris Paul, let me see what is. Let me see something. What is his price? It's only eighty three hundred. Seems reasonable enough. Um, so I'll have to look at that again. Uh, I think that if all this Washington value does open up, it could create a situation where you might want to run something back with, with Phoenix. So we'll, we'll take, again, we'll just take another look at this game later. Uh, here's another one that's a little confusing to me. I, I don't want to say confusing, but listen, these are early projections, I guess, but I'm seeing of my top, you know, 10 or 12 values, like six of them are coming from Detroit. And when I saw that, the first thing I was wondering is like, who's out for Detroit? And it's really nobody. I mean, nobody's out. I thought Bogdanovich was going to be out or something like that. But I guess these guys are just too cheap. I mean, we're going to start with, I don't know who we're going to start with, but let's let's just list them all. Like Alec Burks is 3,800. You have Jalen Duran, who is 5,100. You have Isaiah Stewart who's only 4,800. That's just way too cheap. And then you have Sadiq Bey at, at, at 3,700. I don't exactly know what's going on here. Um, I mean, I know what's going on. Like they just, they just slashed the price of all these guys. Then you have Jaden Ivey and also Killian Hayes. So all of these Detroit guys are just mispriced, um, which is just kind of weird. So I, I see variations where you play three or four Detroit guys. And if you're going to do that, it's probably a decent idea to try to find someone to run it back with in Orlando, except I don't really see anybody um, that looks that great. Fultz is, is put up to 6K. Um, you have Vanchero is up to 8,100. Wendell Carter Jr., 6,700. Bamba's only 4,400. That could be interesting. Let me take a look and see if there's anybody from Orlando here that I'm not really seeing much. Really weird slate. Just like these random Detroit values just got 
DK just priced these guys into, into playability um, just kind of overnight. Kind of weird. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, look, Let's look ahead to Lakers-Miami. Um, this, to me, is kind of – I mean, James is certainly taking on all the usage, but it's definitely a tough matchup. Um, but I don't know. I'll, t- I'll take a shot. Um, he's 10-3, going back to Miami, where obviously he – he made made quite a bit of hay in his career. Um, he's, I imagine, ten three is very fair for him. I actually have him as my, you know, I have two guys like really that stand out at the top. But after that, I have LeBron is very reasonable. There's him and two other guys that are very similar. Um, so yeah, I think he's fine. It's a tough matchup against Miami, but that's all factored into the price here, and it's all factored into the projection. Right now, he's. Projecting a full 50 fantasy points, which is not bad. Um, okay, uh, let's see Miami. Again, it just, as usual, it just depends who's playing. You know, Adebayo is questionable. I guess Butler is always questionable. I mean, it's just kind of ridiculous. So we have to wait to see who's playing for Miami. And to speculate on that is somewhat irresponsible, to say the least. So I mentioned there are two guys um, just below LeBron or close to him. Um, and they're both from this next game. Uh, I like both of the spend ups from Brooklyn, both uh, Durant and uh, and Kyrie. Um, so that's the first thing. On the Atlanta side, Trey Young is down to nine nine hundred. I think that's pretty reasonable. And I wonder if you could play all three. I mean, it's probably something you don't even want to do to play both Durant and. Uh, Kyrie together, but Atlanta is a pretty, pretty good matchup. See, Trey Young himself is being injured. Uh, he said he hopes to be able to play for a calf injury. Boy, oh boy. Um, so I guess we're waiting again. I mean, if he's out, then Murray becomes extremely strong, uh, to say the least. Bogdanovich is probably strong anyway, but yeah, I like, uh, Kyrie, I like Durant. Even Simmons is not bad. Look at some of the values here in this game. Um, yeah, Royce O'Neal, 4,300. I, I like all these guys from Brooklyn. So let's keep an eye on the news from Atlanta, see who's playing, see who isn't. But I think this is a very stackable game. Milwaukee and Chicago. It looks as though, for whatever reason, these Chicago values are not quite – as strong as they have been. And I wonder why that is. Uh, let's see DeSomnu even. He is, I want to have him projected like 13 fantasy points. Is, is, is Caruso back? Is that the story? Let's see. That was questionable. I mean, he's missed. So we just have to see. I mean, again, we have to see. Uh, I think Connaughton was the preferred guy as long as, as far as my early projections go let me just double check that um patrick williams 4600 well actually excuse me that's uh on the other, other team sorry um so yeah i guess the chicago guys are not really rating to be all that strong at least in the early looks very strange very very strange early look today uh, i guess DeRozan would be my favorite but we'll have to see uh, Milwaukee, uh, I mentioned uh, Connaughton. Before we get to him, uh, Giannis at 11.5, I think is much more reasonable. Um, he's been well over 12. And on a slate like this, I mean, I, th- I think you can you can use these points. So I think Giannis is very playable at 11.5. And if the Detroit value holds, you could probably get the uh, – and if, God forbid, some Atlanta value comes up, probably get in uh, – uh, Giannis pretty handily, so I actually like him tonight. I did mention Connaughton. Let me just see if he's actually good. Yeah, Connaughton at 4K, I have him as 5.5X, which puts him right in the middle of these Detroit guys. Um, so that definitely makes some sense. Um, other Milwaukee guys, I guess, you know, I guess Drew Holiday at 8,200. Um, so, yeah, I think Giannis is, is pretty playable. Once again, Connaughton, decent value. Chicago, will wait and see if Caruso's in. If he's still out, then those other guys remain in play for the minutes. Um, 
is is Drummond showing up again? I don't think so. Finally, um, Vooch seventy seven hundred is being priced up a little bit. Seems though he would be a good play. She's not showing up as that way quite now, quite yet, quite now. Very 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 well spoken. Um, all right. So Minnesota against New Orleans for some reason. I'm getting a well, not a great point per dollar play, but a decent point per dollar play on Nas Reed. Are, are they not expecting Gobert to play for some reason? Or I guess it doesn't even matter. I mean, if he's going to play, well, no. December 26th, did Gobert play on Christmas? I mean, he played on Christmas anyway, and Re Reed still played 30 minutes. So, yeah, wow. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we'll keep playing him at forty seven hundred. We play these two together. I mean, this is a uh, sounds good to me. Uh, definitely like Nas Reed. What else uh, is Zion back? Well, if Zion's back. He's showing up as kind of a decent secondary play uh, at ten one. I have him a little worse than Durant, um, but again, if he's in, uh, again, I I think he's viable. Um, they are probable for today. Okay, very nice. Um, I think I like him at 10-1. And it also, I think, makes uh, Joval a little less viable. But I don't want to make sure that we're not making a mistake by not playing Joval. I guess 6,800, they give him a price increase and with Zion back. Yeah, so for me, I do like Zion the best in this game. It's a 130, 234 total. It's certainly is worth trying to find guys to play. Um, what else? Um, nothing really on the value side today with Zion back and McCollum playing. So Minnesota, after Nas Reed, I'm not really seeing much. Um, Anthony Edwards, 9,500. Gobert, I mean, both those are just are, are okay. I mean, in, in game stacks, maybe try that. Like if you want to play Zion with somebody, then yeah, you can play Zion with, with Edwards and Zion with Gobert or something like that. But Nas Reed thing is really interesting. Let me pull this up for a second. It's kind of we call popcorn machine and we'll see what how this all happened with Minnesota. Minnesota, Miami, Dean Flo. Um, they didn't start Nasri. They just they she just played thirty minutes. So what what happened? Who did he come in for? He came in for Gobert, but then there are the, all these overlap minutes where they played together. Really interesting. Really interesting. So I'm gonna keep I'm I'm gonna keep doing this. Like if you're gonna get thirty minutes of Nasri, whether whether on the starting or off the bench. Uh, I think I think you kind of have to do that. All right, uh, Golden State, Utah. Did Golden State finally going to win last night. Uh, get a chance to bust with Jordan Poole again. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Jordan Poole looks to be uh, a good play at eighty six hundred. Um, after Kyrie, he's my second favorite of the uh, second favorite of the. Uh, of the spend ups, oh, excuse me, of the mid rangers. So I think he's viable again. It's kind of been annoying to play him, but nonetheless, he still rates to be a good play. Um, aside from that, I don't really have too much, at least on the early look for Golden State. Uh, between DiVincenzo and Draymond, I'm sure one of them's okay, but not really getting to it. Utah, early looks. Conley seems way too cheap at 4,900. Not way too cheap, but too cheap at 4,900. And after that, I mean, not a lot. So I think Poole, maybe one of Draymond or DiVincenzo, but mostly just Poole. And Utah, maybe just Conley. All right, so Denver, Sacramento, let's go. 236.5 point total or so. Very close game, uh, according to the spread. And um, Jokic is a great play. Um, I have Jokic and Giannis as 
both very, very strong spend ups. And, and I think that you probably want to try to play one of them if you can. Um, and I've already identified some good Detroit value that could at least get it starting. Um, um, just respond to this real quick. Um, so yeah, uh, Jokic, good play. I imagine that Jamal Murray is going to be sitting. That's 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 the bit of news I think. Um, just for rest purposes, I, I don't have any. And there's nothing listing this, but uh, it, it would make sense for him to sit on this back to back. So just be on the lookout for it. I mean, if he does sit, then you'll see you'll see the projections update, and you'll see like these guards, like you know, uh, Highlands uh, show up. I don't know. I just play Ish, Ish Smith. Bruce Brown got taken out of this game as well. So we ha we have to we have to really keep an eye on the injury news here for the Denver side, and of course it's a late game, so it's going to be another night where you're going to have to be really paying attention to optimize your performance. Uh, so yeah, Jokic for sure. And probably somebody from Denver is going to open up. Just not sure who it's going to be. If Bruce Brown is out and Murray is out. Well, I'll tell you who's going to be a probably good play regardless is Michael Porter Jr. I mean, he, he, he blew up last night where we kind of knew he had a chance to at 46 fantasy points. Um, uh, so if there's no Bruce Brown, uh, then it's even more, not that he needs Bruce Brown to be out to get usage, but uh, let's just say Michael Porter Jr. It doesn't hurt by those guys being out. So Michael Porter Jr. Again, looks good. Uh, Jokic and watch the news. Sacramento, you had Sabonis who missed shoot around yesterday. Oh, and not to mention, sorry, uh, uh, Aaron Gordon was out, out yesterday. Um, excuse me. He was out yesterday and he might miss today. Who knows? And maybe we won't know until the early game is locked. So got to be on the lookout. And on the Sacramento side, uh, you had Devonta Sabonis who, who sat out. Uh, let's see here. He didn't play Tuesday. He was a fractured right thumb. Um, I don't blame him. As a matter of fact, I mean, if, if he is, if he plays, I kind of want to just hope he plays so I can fade him. You know, I'm not playing anybody with a broken thumb, especially against Jokic. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's it. They're running this. I guess they're running this thing back again, right? I mean, how did? I mean, last night Denver did win kind of a low-scoring game, and I don't know. I guess Sacramento should. Should turn the tables, but I tell you, Fox was uh, Fox was pretty good yesterday. But I don't know; uh, he's not showing up as such a great play today. And all these guys on back to backs are kind of kind of fishy. So for me, I'll go with the consistency. I'll go with, with I guess, with Jokic. Um, and is that it? No, I mean we have to look and see see the injury news again. If, if what's his name is out again. If Sabonis is out, then we have to see if we want to be suckers and play Alex Lenning at 3K. Or maybe we want to play uh, Richard Holmes at 3K. I mean, that's what happened last night. Like, Holmes played 23 minutes, and Len played, what? Uh, four, only 14 minutes. He started and played only 14 minutes. So uh, I, hope, I hope we've learned our lesson uh, from that. Um I guess that's it. Uh, Bobby will be joining us at six o'clock where we go over the late, the late news. But I think overall the slate is like all of them, just kind of ripe with injury news that needs to be worked out. Um, it's, we got two spend ups where it would be nice to play uh, Giannis and or Jokic. And there are some decent mid range, mid, mid range plays as well. Like uh, specifically Kyrie and Jordan pool. Um, and we're watching to see who plays from Miami, the usual NBA DFS evening. That'll do it. I'll see you later.